Hi guys, <laughs> it's the Euro Salon SA and as you can see we are standing on this absolutely random location <laughs> just because it fits my transmogrification and uh, today we're gonna talk about macros I'm gonna tell you my macros because I got questioned quite a bit about macros so um, yeah, let's get started first off I'm gonna start with the macros the macros on my mage here I got a macro for arcane power which casts arcane power and uses my trinket not my pvp trinket but my used trinket you can see and I just save a bind um, this is my fire blast macro which casts fire blast and uses my engineering rocket and gloves which is for some reason on cooldown Okay, um, here is the Nether Tempest macro, which basically casts Nether Tempest but shows the cooldown on my rocket because on Fire Blast, the macro that actually uses the rocket, I want to see the cooldown of my Fire Blast. So, yeah, here I see the cooldown of Fire Blast, and here I see the cooldown of the engineering rocket, which um, <laughs> because Nether Tempest has no cooldown, anyways. Um, this is my counter spell macro, which stops casting, removes ice block if there is any, and casts counter spell. And I have the same thing for focus. I have um, the curse, I think it was the name, or dispel curse, or something like that. The spell that removes the curse, yeah, nobody really knows its name. Um, that casts on Dolmore, I have removed curse on 5 and on shift on 5 I have it but it says nothing because there's no Dolmore around um, I have a simple focus deep macro I have a lot of simple focus macros um, this is for focus frost jaw but if I don't have frost jaw learned it's gonna cast ring of frost uh, simple polymorph macro, foc focus polymorph macro, which of course removes ice block if any. This is my ice block macro. You see, one click, cast ice block, second click, removes ice block. The thing you saw that looks like ice armor is the glyph of ice block, which casts a frost now. But if I'm in battleground, okay, so <laughs> first it stops casting, of course. Then it uses health stone from the inventory if there is one. Then it uses horde battle standard, which is this thingy. But I can u can't use it now because I can use it only in bound rounds, of course. Then it cancels ice block and then it casts ice block. Why is that? Because um, the macro executes the commands in the row that you row them for ex okay so that's one okay that's not a comment actually so one two three four five so if I press it once it will attempt to cancel ice block but I don't have ice block yet and then it casts ice block and after five there is nothing so on the first press it will not do anything but if I press it again it will again execute one two three and there is four which will remove the ice block hour because I've already casted it. But I talk too much about something really elementary. Okay, that's just a simple deep freeze macro with cancel our ice block and stop casting. That's my frost pet macro, which is a bit complicated. So it shows the tooltip of freeze, of course, dismounts, of course, and it casts if I don't have a pet. It casts Summon Water Elemental on my pet if it's dead. So basically, if I don't have a pet, it casts Summon Water Elemental. If I have a pet and it's dead, it will cast it too. Because if I, um, if I just make it like that, when my pet gets killed, uh, if I don't have a pet, 
it will not cast it. So you basically need all that that I can't undo. You need that macro and then I have freeze with exclamation mark which means that if I press freeze I, the macro again it will not remove the yellow circle and pet follow it in the end so um, that's my arcane barrage macro which casts alter time and then arcane barrage with one click and then uses my engineering rocket because I want to do damage anyways <laughs> so if it's off cooldown it's gonna cast it but if you spam that macro it's gonna bug it's gonna cast two times alter time and then arcane barrage which is which is just a bug of alter time which can't really be fixed you can't fix it by any way so you just gotta press this macro once wait for the global cooldown or press it again while you are on global cooldown and then use it again what that does is it saves your charges casts your cane barrage then you press it again and you have your charges again okay so um, that's just simple um, the same macro as this one cast arcane power and use my um, trinket but this one is for frost for icy veins and that's about my frost macros about my mage macros I'm going to log out to my rogue and while I do so I'm going to explain a few macros that I use on both of my characters so I have those two macros they're called PV and PVP if I am with my PVP set PVP spec and uh, recount is hidden right here it is going to equip my PV set start uh, changing my talents and show my recount all with one click you don't have to do all those three things and you just and you just swap between those two macros which change your gear talents and recount show height and I'm gonna show you how those macros works right now how those macros work okay so right now I'm with my PVE set and PVE talents and to recount the shown so if I press macro once changed my gear start activating the PVP talents and recount is not here if press PVP it's not going to work <laughs> for some reason oh I wanna press PVE of course not PVE I'm just retarded it's kinda late so yeah you see they work flawlessly they're just they are my favorite macros maybe since Cataclysm so yeah let's move on um, it's a simple PvP trinket macro let me change the PvP again oh come on change the spec I gotta wait <laughs> and it simply activates the trinket in your first slot so if I swap them you see what happens that's good for when you have um, for when you have uh, use trinkets on both of your specs for example if my okay I don't have the trinket if that trinket was with use effect in my PV that macro was going to work for both specs which is which is quite good a simple macro to target all of the rares on the uh, whatever island that was Pandaland, yeah, Isle of Thunder. It just targets them. That's a simple mouse over focus macro, as you can see. It just focus my mouse over, and if I don't have anything under my mouse, it clears my focus. Yeah, you see. Um, that's my mount macro. It will dismount me if only if I'm mounted, which is quite logic. Um, it uses white skeletal warhorse. I'm not actually sure how that macro works to be honest, but if it's flyable, it uses your 
we are your flying mount and if it's no flyable we use white skelter warhorse and I'm not sure why that's here and not here but it works properly so yeah um, I got a lot of focus macros like really simple ones like cast at focus kick the same for sap for shift for chip short for blind for dismantle and I have a lot of stance macros and you're gonna ask why you have stance macros I mean your bar changes anyways <laughs> when you go in stealth for example but no for example um, you as a rogue you have just two or I'm actually not sure if shadow dance changes your bars because you use Aaron's my whole life but okay so if you are in Vanish or in Stealth, your bar is obviously the same. It shows your Stealth bar. But with a macro, you can have a different uh, move or spell or ability or whatever you want to call it on uh, just being out of Stealth, out of everything. In Stealth, in Vanish and in Shadowlands. So basically, that's my assassination queue. Um, if I'm out of stealth, it's gonna cast Mutilate. If I'm stealth or vanish or shadow dance, I don't have shadow dance, <laughs> but anyways, it's gonna cast Ambush. Um, focus Deadly Throw. It targets my focus because you can't cast Sequoians, for example, at focus. You can't do that. You can't. So you gotta target your focus. Okay, you can do that. If you have this macro, it's going to target your focus, execute the second line and target your last target. So basically, if you're targeted your target, <laughs> which is quite logic, it's going to target your focus and immediately target your first target. For example, you have your versus mage rogue and you want to cast deadly throw on the mage. So you target the rogue you put the mage on focus, you press the macro and it's going to target the mage and then the rogue, but it's going to do it so fast that it's like you cast it on your focus, but I I don't, I prefer not having this. So it casts redirect and then lead throw on my focus. Um, this is quite mixed macro. Um, actually it's not, <laughs> because I'm assassination. So it casts Vendetta if I don't have anything. If I'm in um, Stealth or Vanish, it's going to cast Shroud of Concel or whatever. It's going to Shroud. That's my Ohai macro <laughs> for PV opening. Cast Aquinas, reset equals combat. That means that when I leave combat, the macro is going to reset. Ambush, Rupture, Ambush because I use Subterfuge. Ambush, Rupture, Ambush, Slice and Dice, Multilate, and Venom. That's simply one macro for your PvE opening. Here we have the same macro for Ambush and Backstab for Subtletly. Subtletly, Subtletly, blah, blah. <laughs> if I am out of stealth, it's gonna cast Backstab, and if I'm in anything else, it's gonna Ambush. So that's my Dance macro, Shadow Dance macro. It's going to announce to the party that you're dancing or shrouding. If you are out of everything, it's going to shadow dance. If you are in vanish or stealth, it's going to cast shroud. If you are in shadow dance, whatever, it's going to go roll. Dancing. <sighs> That's just a simple cast sequence macro again, like the focus deadly throw one. It, it casts shadow dance, shadow step and sap on my focus target. If I notice that somebody is out of... Um, out of... come on, say it, <laughs> out of combat, yeah. I can just go to him, sap him, and then I can get uh, back on my target. A simple gouge macro, gouge out of everything, premeditation in stealth or whatever. Same thing but for focus, focus kidney shot, which casts redirect kidney shot the same way 
with the redirect deadly throw. That's my growth macro, which is eviscerate and growth. My kidney shot macro, which is kidney shot and chip shot, depending on stance again. I have a cast sequence macro for paralytic poison and deadly poison because <laughs> you don't want to have two buttons for this. And again, no stealth, going to cast stealth. If stealth, going to sap. And my tricks of the trade macro, mainly for PvE. It casts trick of, tricks of the trade at your focus. I actually gotta add here. Exists, no harm. So, if I have a focus, it exists, and it's not a harmful. For, is, for example, it's not a monster, it's gonna cast trickers of the trade. If anything of those is invalid, exists or no harm, it's gonna cast it on party 1, which is for arena. So, um, those are my macros. <laughs> I hope they helped you. And, um, let me see if I have anything else to add. Um, oh yes, I, I do have something. Um, why I use stance macros instead of changing my bar? Because if I go to stealth, you see that really different buttons change. Not just one bar. That's one reason. Second reason is, for example, Let's say that I can sub the target. I'm right next to him, we're both out of combat, but I'm out of stealth. So if I start spamming my stealth macro, it's actually going to cast stealth and then remove your stealth. It's going to work like... like that. Let me find stealth. Oh, great! Oh, there you go. There, there. So it's going to work like that. But it's going to do it way faster. Like... It's going to simply remove. And that's avoided with macros. If you... If I spam it now, it will not do it because it's a macro. Basically, when you cut stealth, your bar changes a bit delayed. So basically, if you spam it on the first press you activate stealth on the second press you remove stealth because the bar haven't changed you still spam your stealth button not the button that is on the other bar you remove it and you never end up in stealth you just activate its cooldown and you're like oh shit <laughs> so that's why I use a lot of a lot of stance macros so thanks for watching hope that was